third episode uh, by Russell T. Davies uh, in the first season of Doctor Who was um, Aliens of London. This is the first part of a two-part, this is the first two-part of it we got since the series was resurrected. And it introduced, it reintroduced the, uh, the, the uh, cliffhanger element at the end of the episode. Um, I re this is another one of those episodes that I thought was, uh, it was, it was, it was a pretty good idea, you know, it was, it's, of course, at this point in time, this is the first episode where, this is before we knew that every other story that Russell T. Davies did was set in London. This is the first episode that we got that was, you know, aliens are taking over London. You know, and, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just point out, this is the first inconsistency with this episode that I noticed when I was watching, uh, The Christmas Invasion again the other day. If you watch The Christmas Invasion, okay, that was after Aliens in London, okay, you know, they, the Russell T. Davies, they always put these, you know, these, these, uh, news shots on there, you know, of all these news anchors, you know, and the end of the world is upon us, you know, they just make it more dramatic and everything, you know, and, and this, uh, that, the, the news anchor and The Christmas Invasion says that uh, this is undeniable proof that we are not alone in the universe. What happened? What happened? I mean, who was that? It crashed into the Big Ben, okay? And aliens in London, okay? I mean, how? I mean, how could the world have not seen that? Okay, aliens were trying to take over London, you know, and they were taking over people's bodies, and their ship crashed through the into the Thames River, you know, and they hit Big Ben on the way down. You know, how can you? How can people still be saying that aliens don't exist? You know, and, 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 and that's that's assuming that's assuming that the that the classic series doesn't even exist. You know, because I mean, the Doctor had been dealing with aliens for with a uh, unit and everything. You know, throughout the entire length of the classic series, the original series. You know, so I mean, it was just like it's just it, that stuff right there irritated me. You know, because anytime Russell T Davies would would insert a line of like that into the series, it's like he completely deliberately ignored the fact that there is an original series that exists, you know, because when the series was resurrected, it, was, it wasn't supposed to be, it wasn't intended to be a whole new take on Doctor Who. It was supposed to be a continuation of the series from the 1996 movie, you know, but there were so many, it, was, it happened so frequently, it was just like, you know, he completely ignored you know, ties to the original series, you know, it's just like then, you know, it was just like, how, how can people still be saying that aliens don't exist? You know, because in the Doctor Who universe, they had been dealing with aliens for, I mean, the Zygons and the Silurians, the Ice Warriors, you know, and how can people be saying that aliens don't exist? You know, that's ridiculous. You know, okay, and the Slitheen, this introduced the Slitheen, okay, and I thought that they were very well thought of, you know, I have to give props to Rusty Davies for developing the Slitheen. I thought that they were, uh, they were overall well done. And the main reason I like the Slitheen so much is because they aren't CGI aliens. They're not done computers. They're not computer generated aliens. Now, because they even did, you know, they're, they're actors up in suits and they even did the animatronics with their eyes and everything. It's, it was pretty neat. Okay. First of the episode, we get into the episode, I see the aliens, I'm thinking this is going to be good, this is going to be great. Then they start farting. And, you know, the whole serious take on Doctor Who just went, you know, it just fell out, you know, because it was like, this is it was what I was talking about in my last video, you know, where it was just, it was obvious that Russell T. Davies' his interpretation of science fiction is, it has to be funny for people to, to be entertained by it. You know, and that's that's not it. No, that's not the case. You know, you don't have to have, you know, farting aliens for. I mean, this that was just completely. I mean, it was just obvious that that was just. It was like an overdose of modern society. You know, injected into what is what would have been a great episode. You know, if they had just left that element out. If they just left that element out. You know, then it still would have been a serious take on aliens trying to take over London, which is what the story was about. You know, and the, one of the things, another thing that I did not like about this episode, of course, keep in mind, at, at, this, at this point down the road, we, we had not yet experienced this so frequently, uh, all these things I'm talking about so frequently, so we didn't know that this was going to happen yet. But after watching, after five years of Doctor Who, you know, I can honestly say that this is one of the things that irritated me, was the fact that every time that they come back to Earth, 21st century Earth, Rose's family was always involved with it somehow, in one way or another. You know, why is it just out of the entire world, you know, anytime aliens try to take over 21st century Earth, somehow Rose's family was involved. You know, how, I mean, that's, to me, that's just like, that's unimaginative. 
you know, why can't it be in China? Or why can't it be in, uh, you know, just like, you know, you know Helen Raynor wrote Dialogues in Manhattan, you know, and it was in New York, you know, which was great, you know, because that, uh, even though that episode was, you know, said in the, in the past, but when Martha was his companion then, and it, it, had, it had no ties whatsoever with Martha's, with Martha's, you know, uh, perspective on the universe. I mean, it was it was it was completely new for the Doctor, and it was completely new for Martha too. But you know, and it was completely new for the viewers. You know, but when any time Russell T Davies does you know a take on science fiction, it's like he has to go overboard with all of these elements in the episode so that uh, average viewers can understand it. You know, and can relate to it and won't be shunned away. You know, they won't think, you know, I can't understand this, so I'm not going to watch it anymore. You know, so he puts all these little things in there that just, you know, that it, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't really make, it's not really science fiction anymore. It's just kind of, um, it's just kind of like a, a modern day television show, like Flash Forward. You know, it's, it's set on Earth, in modern day Earth, and it's just got, you know, science fiction just kind of sprinkled on there, you know, for, that's, that's, that's how I always described any, anything Russell T. Davies done on Doctor Who. I describe it as a generic modern society television science fiction show with Doctor Who sprinkled on the top. So it's, it's, there's just enough Doctor Who inserted into the series to, to market it as Doctor Who, and that's it. You know, everything else is new. And I'm hoping Stephen Moffat's going to change that in 2010, you know.